In Spain, the outbreak continues to spread fast. There are now almost 14,000 confirmed cases with more than 600 deaths. All hotels will close in Spain by next Tuesday and the Foreign Office has urged British holidaymakers to return home before then. Our Europe correspondent Damien Grammaticus is in Madrid for us tonight. Damien. Sophie, I'm talking through to you from the very heart of Madrid. The city has about half of all Spain's cases, and this is the point, the axis at which the city's two biggest avenues cross. And look, you could practically walk down them now. Now, here they are starting to requisition hotels. The first one here in Madrid will be taken over tomorrow by the government to be used for hospital patients so they can recover. But what's really concerning the authorities, their nightmare scenario, is that the virus has found its way into care homes here where some of the most at-risk populations can be found, as we saw when we visited one of the worst-hit homes here in Madrid today. Inside this Madrid care home are 120 elderly, frail residents, and also now the virus. In just a week, it's taken a terrible toll here. Every day, hearse is called each time another resident has succumbed. From his home right across the street, Miguel Campos says he's watched the vans come and go. 17 of them now. From my window I've seen them. They put the body bags inside and go directly to the crematorium. They are trying to avoid any risk of contamination. So the care home has been sealed off, relatives too not allowed inside, even as their parents or grandparents have been dying. What's happening now in Spain is the scenario many fear, COVID-19 spreading among the most vulnerable. Today, we watched as Carlos Fuentes tried to get in to see his mother. Last he'd heard, she has no symptoms. This is her, Jesusa, 89 years old, celebrating in the home last Christmas with a staff member. I couldn't get inside, he says. I don't know what is going on in there. I just want news about my mother. And when he tries to phone, it's constantly engaged. Volunteers at the care home say there's been little assistance for the staff trying to fight the virus here. We're worried because no one has yet come to sanitize this place. In the surrounding streets, people are hunkered down, part of what is now a nationwide confinement. So this is what you find now all across Spain. People shuttered inside their houses, communities that have fallen silent because everyone is now acutely conscious of the dangers posed by the virus and only venturing out if it's absolutely necessary. Spain only imposed these measures from last weekend, but given the virus's incubation period can be up to two weeks, cases continue to rise fast. Another 2,500 confirmed today. So police are now enforcing the lockdown more vigorously. In Madrid, they've begun handing out fines to people who are outside without a valid reason. It all means a strange quiet has fallen over the Spanish capital. A city stilled by the outbreak here. Dame Grammaticus, BBC News, Madrid. Well, Italy is still the hardest hit country in Europe with more than 35,000 cases. The death toll has also surged again in the last 24 hours by 475. Almost 3,000 people have died there. In Germany, there have been over 12,000 cases and 28 deaths. And tonight, Chancellor Angela Merkel has given an unprecedented televised address describing the virus as the country's greatest challenge since the Second World War. In a moment, we'll speak to Jenny Hill in Berlin, but first let's speak to Mark Lohn in Rome. And another terrible day for Italy with this record rise in the number of people who've died in just 24 hours. Yeah, Sophie, today's figures take the number of deaths here just below that of China, the worst hit country, and likely to overtake it tomorrow. But the real total may be even higher because in some nursing homes, virus-related deaths, deaths are not being recorded because the sick there are not being tested. Now, in terms of the number of cases, well, that is rising by about 13% now every day compared to 23% a week ago. So the rate is slowing, but there is an urgent need to flatten the curve 
enough to help ease the pressure on hospitals. The worst hit area remains by far the north, where in some small towns, mortuaries are being used to store coffins and crematoria are working 24 hours a day. Now, in terms of the restrictions across the country, Italians are on the whole still abiding by them, but the government is considering whether to extend them even further banning all outdoor activities, including, for example, going for a run or riding a bicycle. One final thought, Sophie. You see those pictures and videos of British supermarket aisles virtually empty. That is simply not happening here in Italy. There is virtually no panic buying, despite the fact that Italy's outbreak is far more advanced at the moment than that of Britain. Italians are numb with shock, but they are behaving generally remarkably calmly. And Jenny Hill in Berlin, I mean, Angela Merkel today giving this extraordinary address to the nation, impressing on people that they really must take this virus very seriously. Yes, Angela Merkel said that the outbreak posed the greatest challenge to German society since World War II. Now, she addresses the nation every New Year's Eve, but not once, not in 15 years of leadership, has she ever given a televised statement like this one, urging Germans to take this seriously and to abide by the restrictions which currently limit so much of daily life here. Um, the number of cases here in the last 24 hours has risen by 30 per cent. The health services, though arguably among the best resourced in Europe, are scrambling to prepare themselves. There was an extraordinary note today from the government urging hospitals and clinics to search their stores and their basements for equipment which might now come in handy. Economists are worrying too. Today, BMW, the latest big company to announce it's going to shut down production. There are predictions that the economy of this, Europe's powerhouse, could shrink by as much as 5%. Angela Merkel today said that the restrictions here in Germany have not been imposed lightly, but many fear the government will yet have to go even further. And even as Mrs Merkel was urging her citizens to keep their distance from one another to try and save lives, it emerged that people living in a small town in Bavaria have now found that they have had a lockdown imposed on them. They've been confined to their homes. Jenny Hill in Berlin and Mark Lone in Rome. Thank you both. President Trump says the United States and Canada have agreed to close their border to non-essential traffic as all 50 American states registered cases of coronavirus for the first time. Mr Trump also said that he was sending a US Navy hospital ship to New York, the city worst hit by the outbreak. Our North America correspondent Nick Bryant reports. In New York right now, the rush hour is no more. Companies have been ordered to keep at least half of their employees at home. A city known for its infectious energy, a city that likes to boast it never even has to sleep, is experiencing a form of enforced hibernation. It's now ringed with drive through test centres, as America's largest conurbation has also become the home to the country's largest coronavirus outbreak. And this hospital ship will soon be setting sail for New York Harbour. As the city's medical facilities are overwhelmed in the coming weeks, it will desperately need extra beds. Today, Donald Trump described himself as a wartime president. Thank you very much. And continued to label COVID-19 as the Chinese virus, something he's been forced to defend. Why do you keep using this? Because it comes from it's China. Racist. It's not racist at all, no, not at all. It comes from China. That's why. It comes from China. I want to be accurate. The virus is paralyzing the American economy. This was Wall Street tonight. And as part of a mammoth $1 trillion stimulus package, the US government wants to give immediate cash payments to all Americans to help them through the crisis. The Trump administration has warned Congress that unemployment could reach 20% if it fails to act quickly. That's almost double what it was during the Great Recession that started in 2008. And approaching the figure, from the depths of the Great Depression in the 1930s. At the 9-11 Memorial, there are no fresh flowers anymore. This sacred place, inscribed with the names of those who lost their lives on September the 11th, has also been sequestered. This has fast become a global convulsion that looks like being even more consequential. Another 21st century crisis, 
that separates the past and the future into the before and the after. Nick Bryant, BBC News, New York.